Hi and welcome to this tutorial on how to edit the tech pack templates using Adobe Illustrator. So here we have the um, detail sheet and first of all what we'll look at is we'll look at how to simply edit these templates uh, step by step. So first you might want to add your logo in. So what I will do is I will click on my direct selection arrow and I will go to my color swatch palette and I will fill that with a black or well, then in another document that I have uh, open I will just copy oh there we go and I will just place that there so I could bring in my own logos uh, if they're created in Illustrator by going file and place to bring the logos in Next thing I want to do is I want to amend some of this information at the top. So if I just zoom in a bit. So to edit the text here, I need to click on the type tool, which is the letter T. And I can click on the individual bit of type and, you know, I can click on these sections one by one. So this is the spring. 2000 and uh, sorry 2022 collection um, you know and I can just edit these to put in all my details that I want to paste paste in so it's very important that we cover you know as much information as possible um, and then you know the information for copyright purposes of when it was created and the fabrics that are used because all this will be key information that we you'll want to put in so the next thing you'll want to do is to add your sketches that you've created by editing the patterns here's some of the artwork that i have created so what i can just do is i can just select all of these by clicking and dragging over them and i'll go edit and copy and then i'll go to my sheet here and i shall just paste those in in fact bear with me a moment i will do that in another layer so that i have these pasted in and i can just position these how i want now obviously everything can be moved around you know with what i have here and i potentially might want um to change and edit these and the positions of these and potentially scale these artworks you know however i see fit so you know i can take all of these um, positions and i can you know again double click on these to name my colors so you know um this could be Viking red, you know, for my color palettes. So using my type tool, I can click on the text, you know, and I'll uh, change that to federal blue and so on and so forth. So that's how I can bring in my color sketches. Now, the important thing is that I I'm very clear with the colors that I've brought in so what I'll need to do is I'll need to add to these swatches here so first of all with item number one that's uh, biking red here so I'm going to go to my direct selection tool and I click on this box and I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to select the color that I've brought in you can also see here that if I go to my um, colors that I've brought in, it's remember the names of the colors that I've brought in. So I've been working with Pantone colors, so I have them. But if I can view this as a list if it's easier for you to see that way. So let me just open that. So it's very important, if I just zoom in, that I give the correct color name. So in this case, the color name, it's, you know, it's a Pantone color, biking red color, and that I give the correct Pantone color reference, which is 19 1650 TCX. So that's my color there. So it's 
really is quite simple in terms of adding in my colors but you must make sure that you add all of the colors you require so I'll click on my box again I'll go to my eyedropper tool and I'll click on whoops try that again I'll click on my color of my box there and you'll see that it's filled that in there which is sorry with my type tool that's my anthracite color so that's my anthracite and my color reference for my anthracite my pantone color is 194007 tcx okay so that is how i amend my color swatches so so I've added my logo, I've used my type tool to amend the text at the top, I've copied and pasted in my sketches, and then I've been able to amend my swatches. So what I need to do is now I need to bring a technical diagram over on the right hand side. So I need a real black and white image of the shirt. Now I've made one earlier but let me just show you how I created this so I'm going to take this black and white illustration and then to make sure I don't edit this artwork I'm just going to go to object and lock this selection so I'm only toying with this one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit and edit colors I'm going to recolor this artwork and I'm basically going to pick all of my um, gray colors which are this one here and I'm going to recolor them white so I'm just going to double click on this I go for white there and there that comes in that gray color there so um, that white color there so I'm quite happy with that I'm also oops sorry I didn't mean to uh, click out of that there I'm also going to take this gray color that's here and I'm gonna fill that with a lighter gray for the purposes of this <clears throat> so that's how I can create uh, the artwork how I can create the back of the t-shirt if I haven't done this already is to ungroup all my artwork until I can select the element that is the back of the t-shirt here so I'm going to obviously remove this logo I'm going to remove that front collar I'm going to remove the piece there I'm going to take this crease delete that this crease and press delete to delete that and now I have the front and the back of the t-shirt so that's how I can create the black and white artwork so I will take these two sketches and I will copy and I will paste those into my artwork so there they are there now in terms of the technical information that I want to give them uh, I need to give some key points to explain you know what exactly is you know happening with the clothes so here within my artwork I have these labels which I can use and I can use these to highlight you know key areas within the documents so that I can mark in so I'm going to take something like this to mark in you know the point of the collar yeah, and you know I'll take this bit here and I'll sort of like again highlight the stitching element like that now I can put in these various pieces of information with regards to the stitching I'll just have these written in another document so I can get them right so I can again use my type tool to key in the important information that you know to rib folded crew neck and the type of stitching work that needs to go on 
there so I'll take that I like that text and I can add all the technical details that I need to add within my artwork now of course if I were to bring in one of these elements and maybe it wasn't quite in the right place or I was tight for space or whatever the case may be and I needed to move things about I can of course adjust these points and um, these elements quite simply so you know if however say I needed to adjust the positioning of this well then that is quite simple I can go to my direct selection tool and I can click on say the anchor point in the line and I can adjust the line accordingly right and then I can move the individual points of this by moving that along now obviously this line is too big so the direct selection tool is the option that I need in order to adjust all my individual points the reason being is because all of this is currently grouped together so if I were to ungroup it you know I can move the points individually however if I move you know this here obviously the arrow uh, is not connected to it so I need to grab the end of the line tool the anchor point and then I can adjust the options accordingly the next thing I need to consider is well you know that arrow there maybe that's not quite as clear as I need it to be because of the style of the arrow so potentially I might want to adjust the arrow style so here if I click on the line tool right and I go to the stroke here you can see in this option box that pops up is the ability to add you know uh, various types of arrowheads so stylistically I could change them so I could make say the arrowhead um, slightly fatter by going to you know option 8 or if I needed to increase the scale of it I'll just lock the proportions of that and I'll blow it up 150% and you'll see that's increased the size of the arrow there so so that might be I'll just move that back you know that might be a method I wish to go for you know to um, to make some of these points a bit clearer perhaps uh, but that again is a style choice that you um, that you want to work with right uh, the other types of labeling that we have is things like this that would explain you know what this artwork is and what this graphic and where where we can find it so we will cover that uh, in a few moments the other thing I may want to do is I'll just go down here for this bit so where this element is a different color to uh, the rest so you can see over here in the swatches I've got color A and color B so this would therefore be color B so I need to go into this and using the type tool I need to mark this as the letter B so that's just simply changed there so that then clearly denotes that you know this all this is color A but this this one here is color B and this is where this graphic can be found okay so you should ultimately end up with some artwork that looks like this you know so this would be a atypical you know design sheet and this would allow you to you know present your specs um, as you wish so next let's look at the detail sheet now this sheet is used to uh, give any of the details about any of the graphics that might be on any of your clothing so if I just zoom down here you can see we've got this uh, urban logo here so what I have here in the main uh, part of the window is I have the breakdown of the colors so I have these uh, labels you know a b c d uh, that are down here in the swatch panels which are edited in the same way as uh, they are on the tech sheet so you know put in the color swatches um, whatnot but another important thing is uh, these measurement labels so obviously measuring the uh, approximate width and the height um, and of course you know as per 
you know the previous uh, examples you know you can you know select with the um, direct selection tool and adjust any of these points so you can you know size them accordingly and it's obviously very very important that with your um, your details here at the top which of course again can be edited with the type tool that your graphic the number of the graphic here relates to the number of the graphic the graphic reference that's on your text sheet here so you know you can marry up the two documents right which is obviously very important when you've got loads of uh, different artworks and different designs to work with so um, I hope you found this tutorial useful again if you have any further questions please feel free to ask